you don't have to turn to it, but in 2 Kings, it tells a story there. It tells a story about uh, two brothers who became king, and uh, I'll be there in a little while. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but the older, wiser men of Israel told them, listen, under Solomon, the taxes have been horrendous. If you want the heart of the people, lower the taxes. Sounds like today, doesn't it, huh? <laughs> he says, lower the taxes. And uh, if you'll do that, they'll follow you. And so the younger men, they got together, and they went against that council. And they raised the taxes. and became a great burden. And there was a real split then inside of Israel where they became two different kingdoms then the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom because they wouldn't listen to the wisdom of the older fellows. The title of my message this morning is Flip on the Problem, Get a Hold of God. Amen? Okay? Flip on the Problem, Get a Hold of God. That's a good title. For the last few years, our society and our culture, our government, has been removing itself from what is right and what is truth. They begin to function by their own opinions, their own flesh, their own greed, their own power, the posters, political correctness. They surely haven't been going by our Constitution or going along with God, that's for sure. Likewise, though, the church, the church itself has followed the world's pattern. As a church as a whole, we've turned our back on how God wants us to live. Uh, we've turned all back and watered down our doctrines or our core central beliefs. Uh, we've turned from God's word of being the final authority of faith and practice for our life. Most of Christendom today has followed uh, the false George Barna pose that states that the church has been a complete failure. Uh, he's been building up to that for a long time. And he finally did that a couple years ago. And he's encouraging believers to leave the church and to create a new Christianity according to the new gurus. And as a result of that, that's led to the mega churches of the purpose driven that have watered down truth so much in order not to be offensive uh, to those that are lost or even to believers. And that has led to larger churches. Uh, they have massive numbers. But as one fellow says, they're a mile wide and an inch deep scripturally and spiritually. And uh, little ever in those churches are said about sin, repentance, sanctification, how to live for God in a holy way and giving that to him. And the new wave also it has created what's known as the emergent church. And the emergent church that's taking tremendous hold out there, it is reevaluating all of our doctrines. And then they reinvent new Bible truths, teachings that will agree with them, their culture, and then even other faiths. Uh, these new doctrines, uh, they remove. Uh, the one held, health, uh, I'm sorry, the one held truth, can't speak, that the believers of the past fought for, defended, and even gave their blood for in defending those Bible truths. These new movements, many are leaving the scripture truths, and they're creating a faith that's based upon their opinions, based upon success gurus. And they've created a divide in creating in our younger generation a rebelliousness against the old ways and the old church and the old doctrines. It's created a faith of inclusionists, universalists, pluralists, a hodgepodge of melting down of new age, of all the churches, all the denominations and their faith and even beginning to embrace the Roman Catholic Church as a part of it. Now understand, when our faith is severed from biblical authority, it ceases to be authentic. 
and it will never be permanent nor a biblical Christianity. True Christianity is based upon a knowable biblical belief system that is absolute inspired truth that comes from God. And that, that truth never changes regardless of what movement, regardless of what culture or segments of society says we ought to. Jude verse 3 says this here. The last part of that verse, it states uh, to, in the middle of the verse there, to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. God has given his record and his truth to us. It doesn't need reinterpreting today. Amen? Today's churches are calling for openness, for tolerance, and that's a code word for avoiding biblical absolute truth. Uh, it, they're calling for don't make judgments according to that truth. This new culture in our society, not needing God. And then there's the new Christendom, not needing the church, its old ways, and its old doctrines. They are relentless at attacking the true biblical church, and uh, they don't give up. They've put it down to such a point that people have lost hope and lost heart about the faith. No longer are their attacks directed only in isolated areas, isolated issues, isolated doctrines, but now they're attacking the entire foundation, the entire basis, and uh, the entire structure of biblical truth like the deity of Christ, God coming in flesh, born of a virgin, uh, God in salvation, uh, salvation only in Christ, saved by faith in the gospel through grace alone, security of the believer, God in three persons. All those now have been up for reinterpreting in different ways. And as with society, the secularists tells our nation that anything that hints of God or his morality is to be ruled out of bounds. Uh, you can't hardly mention God anymore in public places without there being a big uproar. Uh, they say, we Americans, we can be good without God. That's what it's saying. And I say to you, that's impossible. <laughs> Romans 3, 10, 11 says, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that doeth good. Uh, I'm going to believe God and prove every man a liar. Amen? Huh? One fellow's long name, I just put his initials down, FD. He says this, if God is dead, everything is permissible. And we're seeing today everything is permissible. Huh? Which means they're turning their back on God. So likewise, the new Christendom is taking over true biblical churches. It's watering down their truth. It's weakening that truth throughout many, many churches. Many people are rejecting God's word, rejecting Bible doctrine so much so that now they have a new Bible, a new Jesus, a new gospel, a new way of living, a new inclusion that brings in all denominations and all faiths, a new belief system. And it has emerged and is still emerging today. But I tell you, by the authority of the word of God, that is absolute. It is false. Paul wrote this in Romans chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. He says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that they which may be that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. It even goes on to state that they suppress the truth. Today, most believers are following these trends. Today, most Christians, there's not much studying going on, not much living according to absolute truth of His Word. We live in a post-Christian age. And as a result, we have a postmodern morality. And what it's doing and trying to do is to cause the disappearance of sin from our vocabulary. Uh, 1 John says, if we say we have no sin, we lie and the truth is not in us. 
<laughs> now, through the psychological community and psychology, which has permeated our society from top to the bottom throughout all of our systems, and it's completely ruined our country, if you want my opinion, and if you don't, I'm telling you my opinion. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because it has infected, it has caused society at large to reject the notion of sin. It's not sin, they say. It's a disease. It's an anti-behavior problem. It's a, it's a lack of moral development. And then when they don't know why the person is behaving the way that they are, they put it, in, they put it into their catch-all phrase, they have a chemical imbalance and then they give them their medication. Uh, what chemical am I missing? I want to know that, okay? Uh, amen. And they're saying it's not man's fault. Man is a victim. And that mentality, that thinking, has filtered down through the church's thinking. And you go to a bookstore today, and large portions of the bookstore has psychology with the solutions and answers for man's inner life when they don't even know what the problem is with man's inner life, huh? which is sin. Hello? Hello? Amen? And the move today is to, de is to get rid of, and it's the decline of sin, even within the church. Almost anything goes today in many churches. It's hardly ever mentioned within the church's services or preaching, hardly ever mentioned on Christian TV, Huh? Just a few, very few ever mention it. And this belief and this result has taken root in the purpose-driven and emergent churches, thus most of Christendom. And this has helped lead to the re-eventing of new truths, supposedly truths, that allows lots of faith to participate, to do away with the need of even atonement, or salvation. They're giving us new definitions of hell, like Rob Bell, or heaven, like McLaren. And they're giving us new definitions of the gospel and those things like that. And they're giving us new teachings of how Christians should be living. And almost all sins that we know are sins have become permissible since they hardly ever talk about sin and its consequences. The truth is, Scripture identifies sin as man's willful revolt against God and His Word. Sin is unfaithfulness to live up to God's holy standards. They don't know what the core of man's problem really is. They don't know that. Only God knows that. And let me just say, sin is at the very core of man's nature. That creates man's problems. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? To do away with sin takes away the very need of the gospel itself. Why do you need a Savior if you're not worried about the sin? And then you ask yourself, was the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, was it a mistake? Sin by society and the church has been redefined, ignored, rejected, neglected, denied, and called outdated. Dr. Moeller says this, but where sin is not faced as sin, then grace cannot be grace. That's a great statement, isn't it? Uh, Romans 5.20, last part of that verse, where sin abounded, grace. Sin calls for grace. Amen? And when you do away with the sin, you don't need the grace. All of this has led to so many so-called Christians leaving biblical churches, wanting to get a high or a thrill this week. What do you do next week to get your pumped up high? Or living absent of absolute authority of scriptures as the basis, the foundation of their faith and practice. Today we have more practicing atheists and what I mean by that, people who say they're Christians but never live their life according to the truth of the authority of Scripture. And they live as if God does not exist. 
and they live according to their flesh or according to other men's opinions. And that's what we see going on today. All people have bad days, difficult days, hurtful days, circumstances that are terrible. Problems enter their life. And what does the masses do about that? Where do they, they go mostly for their help? Well, since most have abdicated from the thinking of God's absolute word, where do they go? They go to the so-called professional counselors. Huh? You know something? That is a shame. And that is a reproach to any child of God who has the answer right there in his word. Get in this book and study it, Elmer Fudd. Amen? Amen. Amen. They usually follow some of psychology's 200-plus different anti-God, anti-sin theories. God tells us as believers, Psalm 1-1, very simple, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen. Our counsel should come from God, always from God and God alone. And they usually focus on your past somewhere. But focusing on your past all the time places the blame on your past circumstances or usually on others instead of standing up for your own responsibility in life. But Christ has dealt with every believer's past on the cross when he died for your sins. We who have been saved have been set free from our past. Now we can identify with Christ. And we don't live our life now according to our past. That's all under the blood. There's power in the blood, they sung. And we live according to our new life that we have in Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 says this here. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. As such were, you're no longer that, you've come into a relationship with Christ. Such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Amen? Amen? Understand, according to God's absolute truth, your circumstance, your issue, your problem is not the problem. You see, your issue, your sin, that's the fruit of, the result of, the consequences of not truly knowing intimately Jesus Christ, thus not living the Christ-like life. That's the problem. You get a hold of God and put Christ in your life and your circumstances and your problems, you begin to handle them. 2 Corinthians 3.8 states this, But we all with an open face beholding as in a, gla in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image, the Lord, the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of our Lord. God says, listen, that's just the result of. Here's what you do. Get along with me, get in my word, begin to study, begin to pray, and begin to focus more on me. Focus on my person, his love, his sacrifice, his long suffering, his joy and peace, his answers for life. And as you're doing that, then you can become more like Christ. And when you're trying to do that, then you begin to, you begin to experience the fruit of the Spirit that lives inside of you as a Christian. And the first thing, the fruit of the Spirit is love. And then it goes to mention some other things, and then it mentions goodness. It's after you're led by Christ, only then can you actually do good because only then you'll do something that's good that will honor and glorify God. Amen? Amen. And it's amazing. We begin to have the fruit of the Spirit working in our lives that to develop this love, we begin to love like Him, and then we begin to have love in our life in all these areas of our life. 
And regardless of what begins to come in my life, what problem, what sin, what difficulty, what trial, what tragedy, what heartache, because I have the love of Christ now inside of my life activated. He's already shed abroad in our hearts the love of God. It's activated now. I'll handle those problems properly. Amen? And when I'm doing that, as I consistently daily study and apply the word of God, his absolute truth, then, now get me, then we're giving the Holy Spirit the opportunity to work in our life. Huh? The Spirit of God is there. It's up to us how much we want him to work in our life. Huh? And the more I yield to Christ, the more I learn of Christ and his word, the more I surrender and begin to try to practice what I'm reading in the word of God, then the Spirit of God takes that and begins to work in my life. Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Listen, the world, psychology, or man can't go that deep, but God's word can. Amen? The soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. In other words, he's watching everything we do. And he's also, though, watching when we're allowing that word of God to penetrate the most inner parts of our heart and our life. Amen? Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.15 you ought to know it well around here. Study to show thyself approved of God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It states in chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, fully equipped, matured, growing, Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And when I'm doing that, then Philippians 2.13 kicks in. For it is God which worketh where? In you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I begin to think like Christ. I begin to desire Christ and his way, his righteousness, his holiness for my life, his path, his will. I begin to desire to want to please him, and he's working that out in my heart and my life now. And no man's wisdom can ever do something that great. That is a God thing, people. And it's available for every one of us as God's children. Every situation, every problem that comes into our life is not the time to run to everybody else except God. It's a time that we become, what, better in our relationship with Jesus Christ, to get to know him better. We have promises. Romans 8, 28 is wonderful. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. But the next verse tells why those things come into our life. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Just like John the Baptist said, I must decrease, he must increase. And all these things in our life show us we can't live on our own without God. But these things push us to Christ and begin to develop us, begin to allow Christ to live through us. That's his heart's desire for all of us today. All too often what we want to do when a person has a problem we want to step in and remove their problem, remove their sin, when God is using those circumstances to fulfill his purpose, his plan for that individual believer. Huh? And we need to allow God's work to go on and work in their life. When we begin to know Christ better, when we begin to grow spiritually, to reach a higher level of spiritual maturity, I get this, our problem will be dealt with as the consequences, as the result of our spiritual maturity and growth. 
And let me say something to you. When you go in and you talk with people and you begin to counsel, it doesn't matter what you hear from them. Now, here's, now don't miss me. You can barely hear their counsel, but if you get a hold of God and you begin to allow him to work in your life, you'll handle every problem. You no longer will need to go and listen to other people. You can go right to God himself in this word here that is absolute truth. There's your solution to all your problems in your life. As a believer, remember this, we're empowered by the Holy Spirit. We are to be controlled by the Scripture and never has and never will need other people, their methods, or their training programs. God has truly given every believer the spiritual ability, the spiritual garments for overcoming, whether it's sin or temptations or how to live godly that's pleasing to God. Understand what we have as Christians. I don't need the world's advice. I need God himself and God's advice for my life. It states this, what we have in Ephesians 1, 13. In whom you also trusted, I'm about done, whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of prophecy. Do you understand that we have the Holy Spirit, God himself, living inside of us? Huh? Not only that, we have his word, 2 Peter 1, 3. 2 Peter 1, 3, it tells us, according as his divine power hath given unto us, what's he given to us? All things that pertain unto life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge, that's the word of God, of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. We have everything we need inside this book right here. Huh? Huh? But also we have him. Colossians 2, 9 and 10 says this here. For in him Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him. Are we complete in him? Well, why don't we trust him? Why do we, when a problem comes into our life, why do we throw our hands up and scream, the sky is falling, the sky is falling? We have the spirit of God. We have the word of God. The Bible says, search the scriptures and they are they which testify of me. We have the son of God. We have, the, we have all of that. It's ours. And here we are. We set the greatest aside and we go to the world's wisdom. What's wrong with us? Are we crazy? Why would we belittle ourselves and go that low? The wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Amen? Amen. Now, all of these things I mentioned, whether it's the purpose-driven, whether it's the emergent, whether it's psychology, all these things, they are leading people away from the absolute authority of the truth of the Word of God. And it's that truth that is our answer, our help our strength, our knowledge. It's that book there that explains about the precious Son of God's love for us and how he will help us in our great times of need. We shouldn't be surprised, by the way, what's going on today. Uh, we've been warned about it. First Timothy 4, 1 says this, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. He states in, Chapter 6, verse 20 and 21, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely called, so-called, of which, uh, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Huh? Then he states in Colossians 2, 6 and following, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus our Lord. How did you receive him? By faith. Faith in what? Faith in what he said to you and he promised to you. So walk ye in him. Continue in your faith in him. Rooted and built up in him. Established in the faith of the absolute word of God. As you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. 
Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Don't follow that stuff. Follow Christ. Huh? It's amazing. People will go to professional counselors and spend hundreds of dollars just because they're irresponsible themselves of not standing up and learning and growing themselves in the truth of God's word. That's amazing. Now, if you want us to counsel with you and you want to give us that money, that's okay. When you come in, I'm saying, here's the Bible, go home. <laughs> Amen? It's there. It's free. King James, not even copyrighted. How about that? It's not time, nor is it right, to run away from God's truth. As society is doing and leaving a vacuum, they'll never get anything done because they've turned their back on God as a whole. But also, Christendom's churches are doing the same thing. And God says, listen, he shakes us, wake up. It's time for you not to quit on my truth and go elsewhere. It's time for you to start standing in faith and trust me and trust my word and embrace the person that the word is describing to you, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. That's what God wants from us. And so I'm saying to you today, all these things that are taking you from the world or from the word of God to the world, and here the problems come, where do you go? You go to them. And God says to you today, listen, flip on the problem. That's not your problem. The problem is you're not going to the word. You're not going to the absolute truth of what God's infallible word is saying to you. Go to it. Dig in it. Study it. Apply it. Worship it because it, rev it reminds you of the person. Jesus Christ. And if you get a hold of that, regardless of what problem comes into your life, you have answers, you have solutions, but also you have peace because you know you're doing it God's way. And God will honor you. God will bless you. My marriage is blowing apart. I go to a lost counselor. Give me a break. How does he have any answers for me who's been born from above? I need to go to somebody who can get a hold of God with me and point me God's way. But you see, we hear that jargon all the time, professional counselors, professional counselors, on and on it goes, and we say, the church has no answers for me. That's a lie. The church, the true church, has the word of God, and it believes in it. And it will share that truth with you, not the world. And you go to the world, you're going to end up like the world. Huh? Most people, they go to professional counselors now and divorce rate is higher today than ever before. What would happen if that individual would get a hold of God and they begin to try to do their marriage God's way? You think something might happen good? Amen. Father, we love you today. We love your word. We know you're not speaking to us, Lord, in audible voices today because you don't need to. You've spoken to us in finality when you completed your word. And you gave us your word. And it's the truth. And it's not just, it's the absolute truth. And it never changes. And Lord, I pray there be some people here that regardless of what our society, regardless of what other Christians or other churches are saying, that they won't vary, they won't waver from this absolute truth. That they will read it, study it, believe it, and obey it. And God, if we start doing that, then our problems and the things of this world will grow strangely dim. And the more I learn of Christ and the more I know about him in my relationship, Lord, then the dimmer the world and the problems get. That's our greatest need today is just to get a hold of you. 
It's not deep. God, the world has, has left because the devil is the God of this world. And he has confused the minds of not just the lost world, but even of Christians, of their easiness and willingness to lead the truth to falsehoods, doctrines of demons, and not stand by the old truths and doctrines and teachings that people have died for. God forgive us and help us to embrace it with new vigor, new faith, new commitment and decision-making that oh, I'm going to put this word in my mind and my heart so it can be in my life and I'm going to trust God to work out my problems as I do this. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Amen.